In this problem, we're told landing with a speed of 71.4 meters per second and traveling due south, a jet comes to rest in 949 meters. Assuming the jet slows with constant acceleration, find the magnitude and direction of its acceleration. So in order to solve this problem, the first thing you want to do is draw what's going on. Right, so we have this jet, right, and so it's going to come, right, it's going to fly, and it's going to land. And so we know at the point of landing, its velocity is going to be equal to 71.4 meters per second. Right, and then we know it's going to travel along this runway, 949 meters, until it comes to rest. And we know when something's at rest, its velocity is 0 meters per second. Right, and so keep in mind it's traveling south this entire time. Right, so now that we know that, what we want to do is write down all the variables we're given. And when I say variables, what I'm talking about is kinematic variables. Right, so the way we solve these problems that have constant acceleration is we use kinematic equations. And so if you look on the right here, these are kinematic equations. And basically what kinematic equations are, they're just equations that we use to solve for certain variables, right, like velocity, acceleration, when problems have constant acceleration. So the way you attempt these or go about solving these problems is just by writing uh, down the kinematic variables first. So you write your given, and then you want to write out all the kinematic variables. Right, so these, the, the variables in these equations are what we call kinematic variables. Right, so there's basically five variables, which are v sub zero, which is basically initial velocity. You have v, which is final velocity. You have t, which is time. Uh, you have uh, delta x, which is basically your change in your position. And then you have acceleration. So these are the five variables you use to solve kinematic equations, okay? And so what you want to do is write down whether or not you're given them because we're going to need them to solve. So let's start with v sub zero. So this is just the initial velocity. And so when you solve these, you basically pick an interval. So what I'm going to say is the initial velocity is right when it lands, right? Or the initial is when it lands, and then it ends right at the end when it stops. So we know the initial velocity when it lands is 71.4 meters per second, right? So we know that. The final velocity is the velocity at the end of the interval. And when they say something comes to rest, that basically always means the final velocity is zero. So basically, v, which is the final velocity, you could write v final, or just v is commonly understood as the final velocity. So you can just write... Uh, v so zero meters per second the time is how long it's going to take and we're actually not given this so we can just say question mark because we don't know delta x is how far it changes right so it's change uh, in position during this time so if we look it's going to travel 749 meters in the positive direction right we're just going to say south is positive so it travels 749 meters that's going to be its change in x or the change in its position or the distance it travels so 949 meters that's that and then acceleration is what we're solving for, right? They want the magnitude and direction of the acceleration, which is a. So basically, we just say a equals question mark. So if you look here, we're given three different variables. We're given v sub zero, we're given v, and we're given delta x. And what we're trying to do is solve for a. So what we're going to do is plug these variables into one of the kinematic equations and solve for a. So if you look at the equations, notice how 1, 2, and 3 all contain the variable t. And we don't know t, so we can't use that. But if you look at equation 4 here, it has a velocity, uh, initial velocity, it has delta x, and it has a. And if you look, we have delta x, right? We have v, sub 0, and we have v. And the only variable left is a, so all we have to do is just plug it in and solve. So if we just rewrite our equation, v squared equals v sub 0 squared plus 2a times delta x. So all we're going to do is just plug in our numbers and go ahead and solve. So v is going to be 0, right? So 0 squared is still 0, equals v sub 0 squared, which is 71.4 squared plus 2 times a, we're just leaving a because that's the variable we're solving for, times delta x. Delta x is 949. So if we want to solve for a, we minus 71.4 squared from both sides. That'll cancel right there. Right, so you'll get minus 71.4 squared equals 2a times 949. What we can do is divide by 2 times 949. That's going to cancel out these constants. So basically, you're going to just get a is equal to minus 71.4 squared divided by 2 times 949. So when you go ahead and plug this in, you're going to get that A, right, what we're solving for, is equal to minus 2.68. And then the units that we use to measure uh, acceleration is in meters per second squared. So minus 2.68 meters per second squared. So that's the acceleration. But what they're asking us for is the magnitude of the acceleration in the direction. So when they say magnitude, essentially what they're talking about is just the absolute value of uh, whatever value you found. So it's just a positive value. So a is going to be equal to 2.68 meters per second squared. But then they also want the direction. So what direction is this traveling in? So basically, the negative sign indicates that the acceleration is in the opposite direction that you're traveling. So we're traveling south, right? So the acceleration means, since it's negative, it means it's in the opposite direction. The opposite of south would just be north, right? So it would be 2.68 meters per second squared. And then you could say, like, due north or in the north direction, 
uh, however you want to write it. But basically, this is the direction north because it's negative. So your acceleration is basically 2.68 meters per second squared due north. But yeah, so this is going to be your answer, and hopefully you found this useful.